touch me, touch me, touch me. I like the way she fuck me, fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. drop, hit it, hit it, hit it. Hit it. Hit it. What's going on with YouTube? This your boy CJ. And this your girl Rena. Make, Make sure y'all subscribe CJ and Rena. I already know today is reaction video on Geography Now. Kazazan. I guess that's right. Kazazan. Alright guys, don't forget to donate to us at the bottom so we can keep going, going, and going. I know y'all ready. I'm ready. You ready? ready? Let's get it. Kazazan. Guys, no, I'm not gonna do a Borat impression, okay? That movie didn't even have a single Kazakh person in it. They filmed the Kazakhstan part in a gypsy village in Romania, and Sasha Baron Cohen was speaking Hebrew half the time. It did, however, boost their tourism by like tenfold, so there's that. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. Today we cover our first Central Asian country. Uh, well, I mean, doesn't Afghanistan kind of count? I mean, didn't Afghanistan kind of Yeah, 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 yeah. Kazakhstan is cool because it's like the country that melts both Europe and East Asia together in a very unique way. You can even kind of tell just by looking at the people. It's like they look kind of Asian, but then you're not sure because some of them have like light Caucasian features. I feel you, Kazakhstan, I've been getting that my whole life. And how did it all happen? Well, it's partially to do with the location that they live in, which brings us to... Now, Turkey may be the bridge between Europe and Asia, if you consider the Middle East Asia, but Kazakhstan is like the bridge between Europe and East Asia. First of all, Kazakhstan is located in Central Asia, surrounded by five other countries. So close to Mongolia, but a 20-mile wide corridor separates them, with a coast on the northeast sides of the Caspian Sea, where their only seaport, Aktau, is located. It is the world's largest landlocked country, ninth largest in the world at nearly 1 million square kilometers. Like, seriously, the country's distance is like the same from London to Istanbul. Speaking of which, the longest road in Europe, the E40, extends over 5,300 miles, all the way from Calais, France to Ritter, Kazakhstan. <laughs> Cute. The country is divided into 14 regions, or Oblistar, with the capital Astana located in the Akmola region. Nonetheless, Almaty in the south is actually the largest city, with Skimkent rounding out number three. And all three of these cities have the busiest airports in Kazakhstan. Now, Kazakhstan was part of the former USSR prior to independence, so you see kind of like leftover disputes when it comes to territorial anomalies. Basically, it kind of went like this. Hello, I'm Gorbachev, and <laughs> all new republics are relinquished from the USSR, which is not the USSR anymore, but just plain Russia. Oh, and it's the year 1990. Okay, but we have like mix up communities so where do we draw the borders you wanted this you figure it out <laughs> the <laughs> Kyrgyzstan episode is gonna be so fun I promise in the Caspian Sea Kazakhstan has a little dispute with Russia over the marshy Ukatni Island as well as the Jeski and Malijem Chushni sandbanks known for being located above an offshore oil producing zone then we have that little dispute with Uzbekistan over the Bozrozhdenia Island which is now a peninsula due to the drying up of the Aral Sea the only other strange territorial anomaly would probably be the famous Baikonur Cosmodrome this is the site where the first launch of the first satellite Sputnik and the first manned orbital flight by Yuri Gagarin happened. This place is leased to Russia until 2050, and today you will need a Russian visa if you want to visit, unless you're lucky enough to score a guided tour. Yeah, in 1991, the Russians were like, All right, Kazakhstan, you are your own country now. No more USSR. You're free. Wow, I get my own space, the Caspian Sea, the mines, the mineral fields, the grassland. Oh, look, a space station. Ah, da, 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 da. That's still mine. That's still mine. Ah. Okay, fine. But remember, you do owe me from all that nuclear testing we were doing on the east side. Dang. Now it's like the most radioactive thing on the planet. Semi Palatinsk. Look it up. I mean, when they built it, they didn't realize Kazakhstan would eventually secede, so yeah. Nonetheless, there are over 27,000 ancient monuments throughout Kazakhstan. Places of interest might include things like the Monument of Independence, the Pyramid of Peace and Harmony, the Isik Burial Mound with the Golden Man, the Soyuz 11 Memorial, Khan Shatter, the tallest tent in the world, Baiterek Tower, Medu, the world's highest skating rink, Ascension Cathedral, Aristan Bab Mausoleum, the National Museum of Kazakhstan, Damn. the Museum of Folk Music, Fountain Circus, Koktobe Hill Recreational Center with rides and attractions, and a Beatles Mausoleum. Monument, Nur Astana Mosque, and the triumphal arch of Mangilik El. But just don't go to Semi Palatinsk, it's like worst in Chernobyl. Yeah, that was a hard blow to their land, which is otherwise pretty majestic. Which brings us to. Kazakhstan's landscape is kind of like an alternate universe Twilight Zone version of Mongolia. It's like kind of similar, but there's something a little off. First of all, the country is generally flat with massive steppes and plains like the Caspian Depression, the Turgay Valley, and the Kazakh Uplands, which compose the majority of the country's land makeup. In the east and southeast, you get the mountains along the Altai and Tian Shan ranges, the highest mountain being Khan Tengri, which again is like the Roraima of Central Asia as it acts as a tripod right, border no. between them, China, and Kyrgyzstan. I don't know why China even bothered with it though. It's like, come 
Come on, you already have like half of Mount Everest. Why take parts of other countries' tallest peaks? I know, right? right? Otherwise, numerous <laughs> rivers cross the country, the longest one being the Irtysh River, which flows through the northeast, shared with Russia and China, dangerously close to the radioactive fallout from Semipalatinsk. However, the Ishim River is more important as it passes through the capital, Astana. Then you get the strange largest lake, Bakhash, because the western half of it is fresh water and the east is salt water. Strange, huh? And that's not even half the strange. Then you have things like the Valley of Balls. <laughs> Valley. With strange <laughs> spherical eroded boulders averaging around three to four meters wide. You have this strange submerged forest, Tamgali wow. Gorge, Chardon Canyon, and the most notable natural landmark, the Drying Aral Sea. It was made by diverting water in the former Soviet times, and now you can see a strange post-apocalyptic setting with rusting abandoned ships and sea vessels in a dry grassland as Bactrian camels graze quietly in the distance. By the way, if you're a part of an alternative rock band, this is like the perfect place to make a location shoot for an album cover. Anyway, Kazakhstan is loaded with natural resources. About one 100 of the elements on the periodic table can be found mined in Kazakhstan. They take 12th place in oil reserves and they are in the top 20 of gas reserves, most of which center around the 970 square mile Tengiz oil field, which is one of the largest in the world, making it the country's largest export oil, which in return makes them the largest economy in Central Asia as they hold about 60% of the entire region's GDP. Wildlife is actually quite prevalent. You have bulls, gray herons, bats, pygmy cormorants, wolves, foxes, stoats, marbled polecats, saiga antelopes, the two national animals, the snow leopard, and the golden stepped eagle. However, the horse is probably the most important animal. It's been said that the horse was probably first tamed and domesticated in Kazakhstan. Eh, debatable. The horse also plays into food. There's a joke that Kazakhs are the second largest meat eaters in the world, the first being wolves. Ha! Challenge accepted. They the national horses? dish being beshbarmak, literally translated as five fingers because you're supposed to eat it with your hands. It's noodles with horse meat on top. Yes, they eat horse. However, the rule is you do not eat the horse you ride. Stop copying me! It's also said that apples originated in Kazakhstan. The name of the city, Almaty, actually translates to the what? place of many apples. You can even find many wild I apple trees and forests all across Kazakhstan. Otherwise, Kazakhstan does pretty well at staying afloat. I mean, they became the first former Soviet nation to receive a positive global investment ranking in 2002. They paid off all their debt to the IMF. Nonetheless, all that forward moving does come with a little bit of backstory and a tincture of controversy, which brings us to... Now, I personally love meeting ethnic Kazakh people because I feel like they could totally pass as my siblings that were separated from me at birth. It's weird, they've got just that beautiful mixture of Asian and Europe. First of all, the country has about 18.1 million people and has about six people per square Eight kilometer. The country is about 67% ethnically Kazakh, whereas about 20% are Russians, and the rest are made up of other groups, mostly Turkic peoples like Uzbeks, Uyghurs, and other groups like Chechens, Ukrainians, Tartars, and Poles. They use the Kazakhstani tenge as their currency, they use the Type-C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now let's talk about the largest indigenous people group. What exactly is a Kazakh? Well, today that question is a lot harder to answer than what it may have been a thousand years ago. In the shortest way, Kazakhs are classified as a Turkic people group. Not Turkish, Turkic. There's a difference. In which they share the same linguistic structure as many other countries and people groups across Asia and Europe. I found this video hosted by Aisulu from the channel Gilo Team, which they do a great job explaining. Check it out. Кипчакские тюрки остались в Азии, а угурские тюрки мигрировали в Анатолию. Кипчакские тюрки подверглись монгольскому нашествию, поэтому мы выглядим монголоидно. Казахи выглядят как китайцы, проповедующие ислам и разговаривающие на русском языке. Awesome video, right? This creates a whole new unique kind of populace that looks like an entire nation of biracials. Kind of like what happened with Brazil with the Pardo people. Nonetheless, most of Kazakhstan is kind of actually at a cultural crossroads. More people speak Russian than the actual native Kazakh language. Yep, I feel you. Nonetheless, the president, Nursultan Nazarbayev, who has been their only president since independence and has a little bit of controversy, like when he held a snap election in 2015 after being accused of human rights violations, just announced that in the next few years, Kazakhstan will be switching over from using the Cyrillic alphabet to the Latin one. Some saying this being a subtle move to Kazakhify their country. Wait, what did you say about the president? Yeah, uh, just look it up, we don't have time. As a Turkic country, Kazakhs are related to and can kind of understand the speech of their other Turkic neighbors that extend as far as the frozen Arctic tundras of Northeast Russia to the Black Sea with Turkey and the Gagauz people in that strange autonomous unit in Moldova. Moldova is gonna be a fun episode, trust me. It's like a place where people don't care if everything is burning to the ground. They just dance through it. Anyway, obviously we don't have time to get into the full history of Kazakhstan, but in the quickest way I can put it, Scythians, Turkic-speaking Mongol tribes arrive, Huns invade, Arabic Karakhani Turk 
Turks come in and introduce Islam. Tribal powers fight for control. Kittians invade. Timur Ileng builds an empire. Kazakhs break away from the Uzbek Khanate. Zungar people invade. Russians come in and help. Then the Russians kind of take over and rule them. Khan Kenny revolts against Russians unsuccessfully. Sons of new Russians and Ukrainians flock in to work. Kazakhs resist military draft in World War One. They become an autonomous republic in the USSR. Russian influence for decades. Independence in 1991. Capital is moved. Tons of new Kazakhs migrate back to Kazakhstan and ethnic Russians move out, making Kazakhs a majority in their own country again. Nazarbayev becomes their only president. A bunch of oil, gas, pipeline controversy. And here we are today. Now, when it comes to culture, Kazakhstan is quite unique. For one, the majority at around 64% identify at least nominally as Muslim. However, in 1990, President Nazarbayev actually created a separate mufiate for the Kazakh Muslims. He forbade religious political parties and removed Kazakhstan from the authority of the Muslim Board of Central Asia. This decreed Kazakhstan as a secular state, even though the government kind of puts strict control on all religious communities. This makes Kazakhstan the only Central Asian country whose constitution does not assign special status to Islam. And apart from certain areas with mosques, you wouldn't even really notice it too much, especially in the booming cities. This is because Kazakhstan's culture is way more Turkic and Mongol derived than stereotypical Middle East Arab Muslim derived. There are people of wanderers, nomads, some people even still live in yurts in the countryside. Oh jeez, what again? During celebrations yeah. you can see people wearing traditional costumes, playing traditional step folk music. By the way, they celebrate three different New Year's, Gregorian, Nari's Spring Equinox, and the Julian calendar. They have so many horse related festivals and games like pick up the napkin and steal the woman on a horse and if you can't she gets to beat you with a whip game. <laughs> Aside from all that, Kazakhs are known for excelling in sports like weightlifting, cycling, and ice hockey. Some notable people from Kazakhstan might include people like cyclist Alexandre Vinokurov, Sabina Altinbekova, Timur Bekmambetov, Gennady Golovkin, Denis Ten, Abai Kunambayuli, Ken Alibek, Abilai Khan, Olja Sulemenov, Marat Zhlambayev, and Shukratni Talipov. At least those are the people you guys, the Kazakh Jagger peeps mentioned to me. I literally have no idea who most of those people are. So basically, with Kazakhstan, you get this strange land of East Asian, European mixed kind of nominally Muslim people that speak Russian that love to ride and eat horses. Yeah, it sounds like people I'd hang with. And let's find out who else thinks the same in... Kazakhstan is like the kingpin big brother of Central Asia. If you want to talk to any of the other former Soviet republics, you usually got to start here first. Now, they generally get along with other Turkic and Russian speaking countries. However, Central Asia is kind of like the Balkans, which it's like a family with a bit of dysfunction. Turkmenistan is like the angry brother that isolates himself. And Uzbekistan is like the angry brother that argues with all the other brothers. Kyrgyzstan is like the little brother that they love, but they keep asking them for money. Tajikistan is like the distant cousin that speaks a Persian based language. Turkey, Mongolia, and South Korea are like far away distant and close friends that share the same Turkic and Mongoloid history and culture as well. They've established great trade deals. Tons of Koreans seem to love moving to Kazakhstan. The US was the first place to recognize them as a state after independence and they've been jumping in on investments. But when it comes to their best friends, most Kazakh people I've talked to have said, Russia. Although certain seasons of controversy have existed, overall, Russia, Russia has not only been close in customs unions, they and Belarus share a free trade agreement, but in almost every other level of diplomacy, they get along well. They both speak Russian, they both love Russian food and TV shows, and even though Kazakhstan is trying to wean itself off the Russian influence to resurge a more Kazakh identity, they can't help but cling on to certain aspects that were so deeply ingrained in their history from the Russians. In conclusion, Kazakhstan is a country that is full of East Asian, mixed, horse-loving, Muslim-majority identifying, Russian-speaking, government country diversifying but moving forward with resource extracting country. That was a fun episode. Kazakh can stand all the wonderful info we just learned. Can't you? Uh, that was so horrible. That was the I think that's the worst pun I've ever made in this entire series. <laughs> Stay tuned. Kenya is coming up next. Okay, I don't know how to say the name. I don't know we're saying it right, guys. If y'all know how to say the name, just correct it. Uh... Yeah, but uh, for them to say they eating horses, that kind of just like threw me off. That was the main thing. I liked the video, but uh, the horse thing, uh, what in the hell? Y'all eat horses and not the ones y'all ride, but it's still a horse. So pretty sure that horse that that horse got to be pretty much born dead if you didn't ride it or something. That makes no sense. People in America eat horses. Yeah, people in America are stupid. Did you eat horses? First off, it don't have to be born dead. It's just wild horses. You know horses are wild too. Some horses that are wild are the best horses and they're the fastest horses. Yeah, they S eat them, not the ones they ride. So, so the so horses that are wild, they eat them. Man, I don't want to hear that. Man, that sounds stupid. Why well, eat a horse and y'all can catch it and win money racing that horse because it's faster because it's wild. 
Yeah, yeah, it may take some time to train, maybe take, I don't know. But anyways, yeah, you like this video? Yeah. Yeah, you don't like it like as much as I like it. Because you so into, yeah, like, you know, eat horses. Wait, eat horses. We eat horses. No. Stop trying to compare us to them. Americans do eat horses. I don't hear that. You eat horses? I don't eat horses. All right, don't want to hear that. Ooh. You can't talk uh, about the culture of Americans, do you don't eat horses, so why are you saying somebody else eat horses? Do you know anybody that eat horses? Go ahead. No. Ah, no. And I don't either. So guess what? I won. You lost. Ba bam. Anything else you gotta say? Conclusion. I won. Okay, guys. Make sure y'all check this video out in the description below. Comment below, and I'll say donate below. Make sure you guys subscribe to CJ Arena. Like always, guys. Peace. Bye. I like the way she touch me, touch me, touch me, touch me. I like the way she fuck me, fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. Hit it, hit it, hit it, drop. Hit it, hit it, hit it, drop.